Basically, this generation is more liberal, more tolerant, more democrat-leaning than the one before. It's not just because they're young. For another point of view, it's hard news with Russell Brown and Wemo on Kiwi. Here's the chat at publicaddress.net, the hard news blog, also the Media 7 show on TVNZ7. Russell Brown joins us. Good morning, Russell. Good morning. Now, um, hopefully you'll be able to make some sense of this issue surrounding the um, the Actors Guild versus um, the Hobbit makers, Peter Jackson in the mix as well. It's really hard to know what's going on. Yeah, it is, and I have to say the reporting around it hasn't been that great either. Um, the, well, the, the parties here are um, New Zealand Actors Equity, which, which has uh, been around a long time, um, was under the um, uh, one of the other unions up until 2005. It um, wasn't doing very well, and the uh, media entertainment, um, oh geez, what are they called? The MEAA, um, which is the Australian Actors Union, okay, um, uh, came in. Media Entertainment Arts Alliance uh, came in in 2005 um, and said, "We'll take you under our wing." Uh, uh, it's surprising. Um, the kind of people who objected to that, including Robert Bruce, the late Robert Bruce, the, the um, actor's agent, who had worked with Equity for years, mm. uh, really warned against it. And he said he didn't like the way these people operated. Um, fast forward to now, and you've got Peter Jackson saying the same thing. I, I think the actors may well have a case, but uh, th- this is a weird and complex situation, and the um, Screen Actors Guild from America is involved in this as well. Part of the... Um, the conspiracy theory you'll hear from the production side is that it's all the Screen Actors Guild trying to stop so-called runaway productions. Um, so they don't want any more films going to Australia and New Zealand, and uh, they've managed to pretty much stop foreign film production in Australia. Right, but the, yeah. actors, the actors' union here is saying that, um, that the, the American Actors' Union is weighing in because they're in solidarity. Yeah. With the actors here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there, there are the two sides. And, um, you know... The, the, the the thing that I can't get past is that um, uh, Actors' Equity um, was registered um, as an affiliate member of the Council of Trade Unions under its um, MEAA name, um, but it's been struck off uh, the official register of incorporated societies mm. uh, because it, it, it let its registration lapse. Okay. So... Um, <laughs> I can actually see why Peter Jackson says uh, he can't negotiate with it, because legally he can't. Right. Uh, and I don't know whether this is deliberate or what, but um, I, I do think the union has a little bit of a nerve here saying uh, they won't talk to us when they've actually <laughs> let their formal registration as an incorporated society lapse mm. and it would be illegal to talk to them. Mm. So you've got that going on. Um, so I think there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people... Take striking positions and casting shapes here, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how it how it shakes out. I would take with a grain of salt um, the idea that Sir Ian McCallum and Kate Blanchett uh, have uh, expressed their support because no one's actually heard from them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. I gather that in, in Ian McCallum's case, at least, it, it, it would be quite unlikely. He really yeah. wants to make The Hobbit. And um, hopefully the, the film will, will get made. But, but, so, but essentially the actors want the same kind of rights that American actors would have on the same set, and that is ongoing, uh, I forget the term for it, but I residuals, think it's yeah. residuals, okay, over time. So let's say that there are, there's merchandise, there's Hobbit dolls and whatnot. American actors would normally get paid out over time for those dolls that, in the sales, but New Zealand actors might not. No, and Jackson says that, that off their own bat they have uh, set up a fund for the New Zealand actors who aren't covered by the union agreements uh, because they're contractors apart from anything else. But that is not as generous as what they would be entitled to uh, if they were Screen Actors Guild members. On a, on a big Hollywood production being made here in New Zealand, wouldn't you think, though, that New Zealand actors should have the same agreements? Yes, but uh, the fact that they haven't, and you know, um, the, this, the reality is that it's been cheaper to make films here, that's been the reason that these films have been made. Here. Because of the actors or because of all the other stuff around? Well, that all the guilds, I mean, the, 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 it, it's not correct to say that these films have been non-union films. Uh, there have been various guilds and unions working there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the, it is true that the New Zealand actors have not had exactly the same terms and conditions as American actors who are members of the Screen Actors Guild have.
Because you would wonder, say, let's say Carl Urban is doing you know, reasonably well in, in um, L.A. at the moment. If he came to do some The Hobbit, would he be, you know, he'd probably be under an American contract, wouldn't he? He would, yeah. He's probably a member of the Screen Actors Guild by now. Yeah. Um, so it is... And I think some actors will be feeling a little bit worried about, about the way it's unfolding because it, it does seem that, that um, this kind of production's dried up in Australia. And you could well say, yeah, well... So be it, because um, yeah, actors are actors, and they all deserve the same conditions. Um, but boy, you talk to people in the production industry here, and uh, they fume. So it, it's going to be. What about what about Peter? We, where do you think he personally sits in this? Because he he'd like to see local people doing well and making yeah, yeah. some he money does, out of this. But, but on the other hand, um, he is he you know he can be a difficult character to work with. Right. And one thing I've noticed. Uh, is that the um, the contact person, the administrative person for Actors Equity New Zealand, which is you know the one that's uh, basically owned by the Australian Union, yeah. is Francis Walsh. I don't know if you recall, but uh, some years ago, Francis Walsh, who's a journalist, was the subject of a bizarre lawsuit uh, from Fran Walsh after she wrote a story in The Listener under her own name, yeah. about Lord of the Rings and yeah. uh, the New Zealand screen industry. And Fran Walsh uh, accused her of uh, basically passing off uh, you know, for using her own name, which was Frances Walsh. Right. Uh, and <laughs> I don't think it went anywhere. Well, but, she wrote uh, a book but, in the end on the, on the Lord of the Rings as well. Yeah, she did. Yeah, yeah you're right, actually. But, I mean, it, the, there's that in there as well. Uh, and, man, you talk to um, some of the people on the production side and they really do not like this Australian union. Um, so, uh, yeah, one would hope they can talk, but I do think that the union really has to um, explain why it let its registration lapse and how it can proceed when it's not actually, um, a, you know, it's not actually an entity. Mm. Um, it, it just seems a bizarre situation to me, and I'm not quite sure why, why that was allowed to happen. Uh, and what they propose to do next. The whole Hobbit project seems like a difficult birth, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. A very troubled production. Yeah. Compared to um, Lord of the Rings, just seemed to... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. When, when it was new and everyone wanted to do it. And, yeah. And, and, you know, and people did work for uh, less than uh, the same, you know, people with the same skills and experience would have gotten in the US. But we're 10 years on now. Yeah. And, 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 and so we've got this maturing, would you say, of the industry? Is that what's going on? Yes, yeah. Um... Although, I mean, the fact is that, that New Zealand continues to be attractive um, to these sorts of productions because, not only because the expertise is here, and it is, mm. uh, but because the costs of production are low. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't know, you would hope to be a way through here, but um, it, it just seems, you know, on both sides, and I have to say particularly from the union, that this, what they've done with allowing themselves to be deregistered and then complaining about uh, the producers not talking to them is just really mm. weird. Some great points there. Thanks very much, Russell. Right out. Cheers. And you can find out more also on publicaddress.net, no doubt. He'll be writing a blog on that today in the hard news.